Now look, today we don't talk about edible insects, no, we're talking about the sweets of the magic of the Orient, about gas. This is one of the famous sweets of Isfahan, of this very beautiful city in Iran with its rich history and with a lot of things to see there. So that's the speciality of Isfahan, wherever somebody's going there, he takes it home for the loved ones, gas is a sweet. It's like nougat. Today it's uh, packed also in, in this kind of things that you can open like this. Originally it was um, it was cut like this, but it was put into uh, a wheat flour, and you have to put the wheat flour away to eat them. It's a it's kind of a marshmallow white material between a lot of pistachios and uh, almonds inside. And this white thing, yes, I could have also asked, who do you think is still eating a lot of mono today? You know, mono, the food from heaven for the uh, people of Israel while they were going through the desert. Mono. Who is eating that still today? I would say mostly Iranians and, of course, people who started to eat it and, and get to know it, they also eat mono. The white thing here, originally, it was mono from the tamarisk tree, excreted by a plant lice, dried in the desert sun, and then mixed together with uh, egg white, and made to a uh, white paste like this, and then um, put together with the nice uh, pistachios. In here. That was originally gas, but today only very little, if any, is in here. It's uh, written here, anjubin. It's called in Farsi gas, anjubin gas meaning tomorisk tree, anjubin meaning kind of the sap of it. But then it was misunderstood that it was the sap of the tamarisk tree, but that's not true. It's the excrete of a plant louse that is eating on the tamarisk tree. You know, a lot of these uh, uh, scale insects, they don't eat the sugary substance in the sap they're eating. They are only interested in the proteins and mostly they excrete the carbohydrates, the sugars in the sap and these sweet drops are picked up by ants, by honeybees. Um, uh, most of the so-called uh, forest honey is made of these drops of the aphids eating on leaves or branches of uh, trees. And we eat it as gas and jabin. I've already uh, explained something about this in the review of the book of Bodenheimer about his tw 1927 expedition to the Sinai. He was there looking for a lot of these uh, shrubs in the Wadis of the Sinai here. What is the dried out uh, valleys? Like for example here, you see, yeah, uh, let's see whether we can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, this is a Vati, it's a dried out uh, valley. Only once a year or once in 10 years, sometimes there's, there you can see a river here, it's flooded and then it's uh, again dried out. And here's a tamarisk tree with this whitish excretion of the, of the scale insects. <coughs> that was originally uh, collected also in Iran, also near Isfahan uh, by women and children. And here you see an old picture of collectors of the gas angebine in the mountains near Isfahan. They have kind of a shovel a leathery shovel that they put under the branches of the tamarisk tree where there is mono on and then they, they hit with a stick on the shrub so that the mono is falling down to this uh, leather uh, thing and they can take it home uh, to the confectioners in Isfahan where they originally mixed the mono, they ground it, they mixed it with egg white and they prepared this uh, wonderful gas. It's also called Iranian nougat, and it tastes also like that today because they don't put a lot of original gas angevin in it. Mostly it's glucose, rose water, and sugar. But it's made from an insect. But it's not written on any of these uh, 
packages because also this is the same thing all over cultivated countries. They are ashamed to say that it's from an insect because they think that people will think it's something dirty or unclean or for primitive people eating like insects. But this is real nice and it tastes real good. But um, I'm sorry, I have never tasted the original one with only gas angiobene in it. Probably more here is uh, just uh, normal industrial uh, sugar. But people also here, I think they would feel embarrassed, embarrassed a little bit um, if they must tell their customers, look, this wonderful gas from this magical oriental landscape, this beautiful sweet is made from the poo of a plant lies. But it is, and this is mono. Oh, what I forgot. <coughs> Very nice. This is a nice book also. 1966 it was published. Uh, Traditional Crafts of Persia from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And this is one of the uh, resources I know about uh, the production of this original gas and jabine. And here is also written, this substance is often referred to as mono. It is produced between June and August by plant louse living on the leaves of the mono tamarisk. And then it's uh, explained how it's originally uh, made. Yeah. So a lot of things get lost because people are embarrassed to say that it's from insects and they have been eating insects. So why not say, yes, mono is from a plant louse <laughs> very easily. Interesting also is the linguistical side of the problem. Where does the name mono come from? I've read that in Wikipedia, so I'm not very sure whether it's true, but it sounds good. Mon who in Hebrew means uh, what is this as a question. So a lot uh, of people explain it in that way. So they, they when the mono came from heaven, they asked, what is this? But also mon in uh, Arabic means uh, plant lice, very normally. So mon, who in in uh, Arabic would just mean this is a uh, plant louse. It's a scale insect. So you never know what is really true, but both stories seem interesting. Yeah. Traditional craft of Persia. If ever you go to Isfahan, try them. And ask the confectioner about the insect that produced this nice sweet.